The White Sox take on the Tigers, 1.10 p.m. Eastern start time. The Chicago White Sox are minus 160, totals 9.5. And, and if you like the Tigers in an upset win at home here, they're plus $1.35 for some money line cash. Now they're also minus a buck 15, catching the one and a half on the run line. Tyler Alexanders, the starting pitcher for Detroit. Dallas Keuchel for the White Sox. Now we're three and zero in our last three underdog tier package picks on my BrockPage.com website. And if you want to see which one of these free YouTube picks I'm actually betting on personally, there's only one way to do that, and that's to sign up for a membership on that website. And once again, that's BrockPage.com. We're also 7-2 and two in our last nine extra daily picks on that very same page. And if you want to access today's extra daily pick, that's only going to cost you just $2.99. We currently have over 800 members who are signed up and active on that BrockPage.com website. And once again, if you want to see which one of these free YouTube picks that I'm actually betting on personally, there's only one way to do that, and that's to sign up for a membership on my website. And once again, that's BrockPage.com. Now, the first place White Sox have done a real nice job hitting the baseball. They're currently in the top five in hits on average per game. Jose Abreu second in the big leagues with 113 RBI. Now, they're taking on a Detroit squad who's consistently struggled at the plate throughout the year. Detroit's currently in the bottom 10 in the league in home scoring. And they're also averaging nearly double-digit strikeouts a game at the plate. Now, they've also gotten some pretty uh, lackluster performances out of Tyler Anderson. He's just 2-3 and three with a 4.13 ERA. Now, total-wise, when it comes to the scoring in this one, 7 out of Detroit's last 10 outings fell under the number, 4-2 and two to the under in their last 6 at home. Meanwhile, the White Sox saw 3 out of their last 4 road games stay under the total themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Chicago White Sox minus 160 in the under 9.5. Next ball game, Royals, Indians, 610 East. The Cleveland Indians are minus 150, totals 9. Cal Quantrill for Cleveland, Daniel Lynch for Kansas City. Now Lynch is just 4 and 5 on this season, 534 ERA and a 1.61 whip. The Royals also play their worst baseball on the road, and they're ranking dead last in the majors in offensive walks at the plate away from home. They're taking on a Cleveland squad who's holding their opponents to just 7.8 hits a game. Cal Quantrill's also had a pretty decent year thus far, 6-3 record and a 2.89 ERA. Now Quantrill's also struck out 110 batters and has a whip of just 1.18. When it comes to the total in this one, the Royals went 60% to the under in their last 10 ball games. Kansas City is also 46 and 30 to the under in all of their road games. I'm going to lean toward the Cleveland Indians minus 150 in the under nine. Next matchup: Pirates Reds, 6:40 Eastern start time. The Cincinnati Reds are minus two dollars. Totals nine. Tyler Molly for Cincinnati, Mitch Keller for Pittsburgh. Now, Keller's had himself another bad year, 4-11 record, 6-14 ERA. The righty's also got himself a 1.74 whip. Now, the last place Pirates have the second fewest wins in the National League right now. They also score fewer runs per contest than any other team in the majors. They're taking on a Reds club who does a fine job putting runners across the plate. They're currently in the top five in the league in home scoring. Nick Castellanos is batting 313 with 29 home runs. Now, the outfielder is also in the top 10 in the league in both batting average and OPS. Meanwhile, pitching wise, Tyler Molly, he's having a real solid season 12 and 5 record and a 359 ERA. Now, Molly's also got himself a ton of strikeouts, 192 Ks along with a, uh, a 1.20 whip. And when it comes to the total in this one, Cincinnati's 23 and 12 to the over in their divisional contests at the Great American Ballpark. Meanwhile, the Pirates saw three out of their last four road games get over the number themselves. 
I'm going to lean toward the Cincinnati Reds minus one and a half and the over nine runs. Next ball game. It is going to be Nationals Marlins 640 Eastern Standard Time. The Miami Marlins are minus 150, totals eight flat. Trevor Rogers for Miami, Josh Rogers for Washington. And despite very limited action, Washington's Josh Rogers comes into today's ball game with a 260 ERA and a 1.04 whip. Despite their struggles throughout the year, the Nationals have done a pretty good job hitting the baseball. Juan Soto is batting 315 with 26 homers and 86 RBI. The outfielder is also third in the big leagues with a 991 OPS. This Nationals lineup is currently in the top five in the entire league and hits on average per game. Now they're taking on a Marlins club who's 22 games below 500. They also strike out a ton at the plate. This Marlins lineup is fanning 9.7 times a game, and they're also averaging only 3.9 runs per contest. And as good as Trevor Rogers has looked this season, he comes into this ball game with a 7-7 record. Now, total wise, Miami went 7-3 to the over in their last 10 ball games, 3-1 to the over in their last four at Lone Depot Park. Meanwhile, the Nationals went 60% to the over in their last 10 meetings with Miami. I'm going to lean toward the Washington Nationals plus one and a half in the over eight. Next matchup, O's versus the Phillies, 7.05 Eastern first pitch. This game's currently off the board as we currently have no confirmed starters for either organization. Give me a good old-fashioned no bet. Next game, Rangers-Yankees, 7.05 Eastern Standard Time. The New York Yankees are minus 250, totals eight and a half. Jordan Montgomery for New York, Dane Dunning for Texas. Dunning's just five and eight with a 428 ERA and a 1.43 whip. The last place Rangers have done a poor job at the plate all season long. They're scoring only 3.7 runs a game when they travel. The Rangers are taking on a Yankees pitching staff who strikes out uh, a lot of guys. Uh, they're fanning 10.2 batters a game on their home field. And they're also in the top 10 in fewest hits allowed per contest. Jordan Montgomery's got a 363 ERA along with 149 strikeouts. When it comes to the number in this one, New York's gone 43 and 33 to the under at Yankee Stadium. Meanwhile, the Rangers saw two out of their last three road games stay under the number themselves. I'm going to lean toward the New York Yankees, minus one and a half, and the under eight and a half runs. Next ball game, Mets versus the Red Sox, 7.10 p.m. East. The Boston Red Sox are minus 140, totals nine and a half. Eduardo Rodriguez for Boston, Marcus Stroman for New York. Despite some fairly good numbers out of Stroman, he still comes into today's contest with a pretty bad 9-12 and record. The Mets' biggest problem this year is their inability to drive in runs. They're in the bottom three in hits on average per game, and they score only 3.9 runs per contest. They're taking on a red-hot Boston club who won their last five straight, and they also have no problem generating offense. These guys are currently the league leaders in home scoring. Rafael Devers has 34 home runs and 105 RBI. The third baseman is currently fifth in the majors in that RBI category. The Red Sox are also leading the majors in hits on average per game at home. Starting pitcher Eduardo Rodriguez, he's also 11-8 on the season with 165 strikeouts. Now, total-wise, Boston went 60% to the over in their last 10 outings. New York 6-4 to the over in their last 10 themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Boston Red Sox, minus 140, and the over 9.5. Next contest, Blue Jays Rays, 7-10 East. The Tampa Bay Rays are minus 120, totals 8.5. Drew Rasmussen for the Rays, Alec Manoa for Toronto. And Manoa's had a really good season with Toronto. He's 6-2 with the Blue Jays with a 3.39 ERA. The righty's averaging over a strikeout an inning. And he also has a very impressive 1.03 whip. In addition to some very solid pitching, the Blue Jays have arguably the best lineup in baseball. 
Vlad Guerrero Jr., he's leading the majors in both batting average and home runs. The Slugger's hitting 320 with 46 homers and 105 RBI. Now, Vlad, he's also got himself an OPS of 1.024. The Blue Jays are currently in the top three in both scoring and hits. They're taking on a Rays club who lost five out of their last nine. The Rays also strike out a ton at the plate. They're in the bottom three in offensive strikeouts, and they find themselves fanning over 9.5 times a game. Now, total-wise, Tampa Bay went 70% to the under in their last 10 ball games, 3-2 and two to the under in their last five at the Trop. Meanwhile, the Blue Jays are 22-14 and 14 to the under in their divisional road games. I'm going to lean toward the underdog, Toronto Blue Jays, plus a dollar and the under eight and a half. Next contest, Twins versus the Cubs, 7.40 Eastern start time. The Chicago Cubs are minus a buck 15, totals eight. Alec Mills for Chicago, Griffin Jacks for Minnesota. Now, Jax is just three and four with a 6.65 ERA and a 1.39 whip. The last place Twins have lost six out of their last eight, and they've given up way too many runs all season long. Their pitching staff's in the bottom three and runs allowed per contest. They're taking on a Cubs team who still has a winning record at Wrigley despite their struggles. They also have Alec Mills on the bump here today, who's got a 6-6 six and six rec uh, record, which is actually quite respectable considering how bad uh, the Cubs have been this year. Now, total-wise, 7 out of Chicago's last 10 ball games got over the number. Minnesota 60% to the over in their last 10 themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Chicago Cubs minus a buck 15 in the over eight runs. Next ball game. It is going to be Cardinals versus the Brewers, 740 Eastern first pitch. The Brewers are minus 210, total seven and a half. Brandon Woodruff for Milwaukee. Jake Woodford for St. Louis. Now Woodford's just two and three with a 430 ERA and a 1.39 whip. Despite their incredible winning streak, this Cardinals pitching staff walks more batters per nine than any other team in the big leagues. And equally as bad, St. Louis is also dead last in the majors in striking batters out. They're taking on a first place Brewers club who's got Brandon Woodruff on the hill, 255 ERA and 100, and, uh, what is it, 108 strikeouts uh, for Woodruff. Now the righty's also got a .96 whip. This Brewers pitching staff leads the majors in strikeouts, and they're holding their opponents to just 3.7 runs a game. Now, total-wise, oddly enough, Milwaukee's 41-34 and 34 to the over on their home field. Meanwhile, the Cardinals are 18-13 and 13 to the over in their divisional road games. I'm going to lean toward the Milwaukee Brewers, minus 1.5, and, and the over 7.5 runs. Next contest. Dodgers, Rockies, 8.40 Eastern start time. The LA Dodgers are minus 210, totals 11. Julio Urias for LA, Antonio Sensatella for Colorado. Despite his bad record, Antonio still struck out 100 batters this year. The Rockies also play their best baseball at home. They're 45-27 and 27 at Coors Field, and they're in the top three in the league in home scoring. C.J. Crones hit 27 home runs and knocked in 83. The first baseman's currently in the top 25 in the bigs in OPS as well. This Colorado lineup is also leading the majors in fewest home strikeouts at the plate. They're taking on a Dodger club who failed to cash in on the run line in two out of their last four road games. This L.A. lineup is also in the bottom half of the league in strikeouts at the plate. Meanwhile, when it comes to the pitching in this one, as dominant as the Dodgers pitching staff has been this year, they do tend to walk a lot of batters on the road. They're currently in the bottom 10 in the league in road walks allowed. Now, total-wise, three out of L.A.'s last four road games stayed under the line. Colorado's 80% to the under in their last 10 outings themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Colorado Rockies, plus one and a half, and the under 11. Next matchup, Astros versus the Angels, 938 Eastern Standard Time. The Houston Astros are minus 230, totals nine. 
Jose Urquidy for Houston, Packy Naughton for Los Angeles. And even though he has just 16 and two-thirds uh, innings under his belt here for the Angels, Packy Naughton's already 0-2 with a 432 ERA and a 1.62 whip. And if you think about it, that's kind of been the uh, story uh, with this Los Angeles squad here this year, just a, a lack of proper pitching. Now, the Angels are walking more batters per nine at home than any other team in the big leagues. They're taking on a Houston club who actually leads the majors in scoring and hits. Yuli Gurriel is batting 317. He's second in the majors in that batting average category. Meanwhile, Jordan Alvarez has hit 31 home runs and knocked in 98. When it comes to the pitching in this one, Jose Urquidy's had a real solid season, 7-3 record and a 3.38 ERA. Now the right, he's also got himself a very impressive 0.98 whip. And when it comes to the total, Houston's 5-0 to the over in their last five ball games. Meanwhile, LA's gone 46 and 29 to the over at Angel Stadium. I'm going to lean toward the Houston Astros minus one and a half in the over nine. Next contest, Braves, D-backs, 940 Eastern first pitch. The Atlanta Braves are minus $2, totals nine and a half. Now, we have no confirmed starter yet for the Braves. Luke Weaver's on the bump here for the Diamondbacks. Weaver's just three and five on the season with a 442 ERA. Arizona's tied with Baltimore right now with uh, for the absolute worst record in Major League Baseball. Uh, their pitching staff's also in the bottom three and runs allowed per contest. They're taking on a Braves club who plays their best baseball on the road. They've also done a real nice job putting runners across the plate this year. They're in the top 10 in scoring on average per game. Austin Riley's hitting 301 with 29 home runs and 92 RBI. Third baseman's currently in the top 25 in batting average, RBI, and OPS. When it comes to the scoring in this one, Atlanta went 60% to the over in their last 10 outings. Arizona's 8-2 to the over in their last 10 themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Atlanta Braves minus 1.5 and, and the over 9.5 runs. Next contest, Mariners, A's, 9.40 p.m. East. The Oakland A's are minus a buck and a quarter, totals 8.5. Paul Blackburn for Oakland, Marco Gonzalez for Seattle. Now, Gonzalez is 8-5 with 95 strikeouts and a 1.21 whip. The Mariners have won three out of their last four ball games. And their pitching staff does a real nice job throwing strikes. As a matter of fact, Seattle's in the top 10 in the uh, league in fewest walks allowed per game on the road. They're taking on an Oakland squad who actually plays uh, better baseball on the road. They play their worst baseball on their home field. The A's lineup is in the bottom three and hits on average per game at home. Meanwhile, pitching-wise, the A's are in the bottom 10 and hits allowed per contest on their home field as well. Paul Blackburn's just 1-2 and two with the A's this year, 494 ERA and a 1.57 whip. And when it comes to the total in this one, Oakland went 60% to the under in their last 10 outings. Seattle's 4-0 to the under in their last four on the road. I'm going to lean toward the Seattle Mariners plus 1.5 and, and the under 8.5 runs. But that, guys, now it's time for our next and final matchup. It is going to be Giants versus the Padres. 10-10 Eastern start time. San Diego's minus a buck 20, total seven and a half. Joe Musgrove for the pods, Kevin Gaussman for San Francisco. Now Gaussman's had one heck of a year for the Giants, 14 and six record, 278 ERA. The righty's also got himself a 1.03 whip. Now Gaussman's struck out 208 batters already. In the first place, Giants still have the best record in Major League Baseball. Now, San Francisco leads the majors in fewest walks allowed per contest. They're taking on a struggling Padres team who lost eight out of their last ten themselves, and they've really struggled to hit the baseball at Peco Park. The San Diego lineups in the bottom ten in hits on average per game at home. They're also in the bottom ten in home scoring. When it comes to the number in this one, seven out of San Diego's last 10 ball games got over the posted total. San Francisco went 60% to the over in their last 10 themselves. 
I'm going to lean toward the San Francisco Giants plus a dollar and the over seven and a half. And with that, guys, now it's time for our quick pick recap. Power to you by my website at brockpage.com, where we are seven and two in our last nine extra daily picks on that website. I like the White Sox minus 160, under nine and a half. Cleveland minus a buck 50, under nine runs. I like Cincinnati minus one and a half, over nine. Washington plus one and a half, over eight runs. Give me a no bet in the Orioles Phillies game since we have no confirmed starters on both sides. I also like the New York Yankees minus one and a half, under eight and a hook. Boston minus 140, over nine and a half runs. Toronto plus a dollar, under eight and a half. Chicago Cubs minus a buck 15, over eight runs. Milwaukee minus one and a half, over seven and a hook. Colorado plus one and a half, under 11 runs. Houston minus one and a half, over nine. Atlanta minus one and a half, over nine and a hook. Seattle plus one and a half, under eight and a half runs. And before I give you my next and final free pick for the video, one final reminder that we are seven and two in our last nine extra daily picks on my brockpage.com website. And if you want to access today's extra daily pick, it's only going to cost you just $2.99. I'm going to lean toward the San Francisco Giants plus a dollar and the over seven and a half. And with that, guys, now it's time for our shout out of the day. And that's going to go to Max S, who said yesterday, shout out from OB. We all live in Brookline. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my website. If you guys do end up getting a membership here today on BrockPage.com, just keep in mind you're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that if you continue to opt in. So if you do end up getting a package here today, you're going to get access to that content all the way through the end of September. I always tell folks, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. With that said, guys, happy Tuesday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockpage.com.